Okay, so it's time to re-rack this wine. That's up next. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you here today. We're actually doing part two of a series on making apple cider wine. So the last time we were here with part one, in fact, I'll link that video here. That's actually when we showed you how we actually took apples fresh off the trees, went ahead and turned those into cider and put it in one of these bad boys to go ahead and start making wine. Today is July 13th. We put this into the secondary on June 26th. So here we are about two and a half weeks later and we are now ready to go ahead and re-rack this again. So you can see that the wine itself is starting to clear really, really nicely. Um, as far as the look, it looks really beautiful. <laughs> it looks like apple juice, really. Uh, maybe apple cider vinegar, very close to that, but a beautiful, beautiful amber color. Um, actually almost does kind of look a little bit like beer, uh, but just a beautiful color, really starting to clear up. You can really see it here in the one gallon jug. We're basically done with the real hard fermentation. One of the reasons why we like using the Premier Cuvée as far as the yeast is it is a very good, strong, fast yeast. So you can see it's already actually starting to clear up real nicely and we've got a nice lees at the bottom. That's what this sludge layer is basically called. So at this point, what we wanna do, because the hard fermentation is basically done, we got a nice sediment layer at the bottom. We wanna go ahead and get this wine off of this lees, which is what we're gonna be working on today. So a few things that we need. Um, we're gonna need to have a, a siphon. So we have an auto siphon here um, and obviously some tubing. I've got a second container here. Um, we're working on about five gallons in this batch. Um, the container that I have here does not have a spigot on it. We were hopeful that we would be able to use the spigot, but this lees layer is actually very, very thick on this first round. Um, so we're not gonna be able to use the spigot. We are gonna be keeping this in this secondary container for probably a couple months before we come back and bottle it. So really don't need to have the spigot yet. This will wind up getting racked another time. You still are gonna need to have an airlock um, and a bung here to seal the cap. A couple things here to measure our specific gravity. Um, so I have a hydrometer here. I have a wine thief because we'll be taking a sample of this today. And then of course I have a container here that we can put the wine into so that we can test the specific gravity and of course do a taste test more importantly. So before I move on should go ahead and say that you do want to make sure you have everything clean and sanitized. We are dealing with wine at this point so we don't want anything getting into here that might taint the wine uh, but first thing we need to do is go ahead and get the airlock removed from this here and then we want to use a wine thief so I'm going to take this off. We're going to use a wine thief to go ahead and start getting some of this wine out of here to test it. Okay, so you can see I have my sample here. So color, you can see it's still really cloudy. This is nowhere near done, um, so it'll clear up quite a bit. We definitely still have some fermenting here, even though it's not going really, really strong, uh, but the yeast is still working on this alcohol. But what I wanna do, I wanna test and see where we are as far as specific gravity to see just how far this yeast has come. It's kinda hard to see this, but wow. That is really, really close, guys. So 0.990 is basically fully attenuated. In other words, the yeast has done its job. And you know what? We are just about there. Now that we have this, of course, I need to find out just to make sure what does this actually taste like? So let's go ahead and try a little bit of this right now. See, it's still cloudy, so this does need to clear quite a bit. It'll definitely do that here in the secondary before we get it bottled. But oh man, it looks just like white wine. Just a beautiful, beautiful wine. Mmm, smells really good. So still smell a lot of the yeast because that still needs to settle quite a bit. Mmm, but it smells really, really neutral. Very, very neutral smell. Mmm, I like that. Let's see what it tastes like. Okay, wow, I'll tell you what. Wow, that's very interesting. Okay, I've never had a dry apple cider wine before. Okay, let me see if I can try to explain this. So still getting a little bit of that yeast kind of kind of taste, which I'm not surprised. It's why we're re-racking today. De definitely has a little bit of that tart that you would expect from an apple, especially the combination of apples that we used. Very, very dry, um, a real good strong alcohol content, which was our goal. And 
Yeah, I'll tell you what, it's interesting. It really is a lot like a cider, like an apple cider, fully dry apple cider that has a much stronger alcohol content. Mm, really good, really good. Okay, so next thing that we need to do is we need to get this thing off the lees. We have that re-racked. So now you can see what we have left over. I'll tell you what, this first Lee's layer, the sludge, man, it is thick. We've got that left over. You also saw us racking from this smaller one gallon jug. So we always make a little extra. So in this case, we had about five and a half gallons, almost six gallons. That way, when we do this first re-racking, we can go ahead and top it off with wine as opposed to topping it off with water, which is what we'll have to do next time around. This just looks amazing. We've got very, very little space up here. This will continue to just off gas. However, we wanna make sure at this point, we keep an airlock on there. We don't have any air getting in here um, that could do anything to contaminate the wine. We don't wanna taint the wine. Uh, but this is ready to go ahead and just get set into a room, get set aside, and we come back here in another couple months. Hopefully it'll be nice and clear, have maybe a slight lees layer on there, and we'll be ready to back sweeten. But that's next time. If you guys aren't a normal subscriber or you're just following us here um, for our winemaking, we'd really love to have you here on a regular basis. We talk about a lot of things here. We are a functioning farm. We do have a couple more in this series before we actually get this bottled. We hope that you'll follow us along through the rest of it. So just wanna thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. Questions or comments in the comment section down below. Instagram and Facebook, we post content there you won't see here on the YouTube channel. And our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link in the description below. A free painless way to help support the channel is using that link the next time you go do your Amazon shopping. Doesn't matter what you buy, if you start with that link, you help support the channel. So just wanna thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you.